Hello everybody, this is Emily the Artist, and today I'm going to be talking about somebody who I've been, um, observing, I guess, for a while. I, I, it's not, not really observing, but I can't think of a better word to use for it, um, for a while now. It's more of a, oh, I found out this dude, you know, it's like, oh my gosh, this dude's kind of crazy. Um, who am I talking about? Well, none other than Andrew Dobson, the man, the myth, the legend. Now, I really shouldn't have to say this, but don't don't harass anybody in this video. I mean, I wouldn't even try going to comment on this page in any of his uh, pages because the one I've heard also, he hasn't really been online for about a year or so now. Oh, uh, Emily, why make an idiot about him, mate? Well, my dear viewer, the reason is very, very simple. I want to into my channel so much. <laughs> um, well, any, but anyway, how did this man start his internet journey? Well, by pretending to be a teenage lesbian drawing inflation art. No, I'm not exaggerating. Um, <laughs> and he, he, went, he uh, went under the name Caddy N. And he drew inflation art. I, I don't know how, I'm not, I can't draw any photos, unfortunately, because for one, I don't want to cross save on my iPad. And also, I just want to look at it. <laughs> Well, but I mean, you know, his inflation fetish would explain his inflated ego. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Um, why do you stop drawing inflation art, you might be wondering? Well, uh, yeah, I don't know. I, his parent, I, he was uh, apparently paranoid if future employers would see it. Um, despite, you know, the fact a lot of the uh, cartoon artists, animators, comic writers have uh, less than PG 13 artwork in their, uh, Portfolio, I should say, but that's not even your part of Um, what did he do besides that short? Well, um, he would then go to the work he went to school at MCAD to study animation, where he was actually, he actually was roommates with Key Jean. Apologies if I'm mispronouncing his name, I can't correct the amount of stuff to crap. An animator at Disney who has worked on Wrecker Ralph, Frozen, Soldier Girls, and a couple other things. No, I'm still not exaggerating. <laughs> you can't make this stuff up. He actually made a couple comics about it. Um, which tended to paint Yang as like a LOL random quirky kind of guy. He wanted to work as a Disney too, but um, after Disney shut down the Cartoon Day animation department, he kind of gave up uh, on wanting to work in the animation industry. Despite, you know, he, he, the fact he uh, could have worked at Cartoon Network, Nickelodeon, Heck, I think, I'm pretty sure Dream, DreamWorks still had their, uh, 2D animation studio opened. But, um, anyway, uh, he, he not, he blamed the, the anime-inspired Treasure Planet for ruining his, uh, dream of working at Disney. Um, he now has, like, a long-running hatred for anime. Um, despite the fact he was a, a very big fan of it for years, um... And the other reason is because it became mainstream, and I guess he really didn't like that. He also, he's actually written out some of his own comics. Um, Alex the Pirate, Formera, Patty, a Slice of Life comic, you're, so you're a cartoonist, and some miraculous ladybug fan comics. Well, I don't remember exactly what Formera was about. I think it was like your basic, like, a ski a sky anime plot. Alex the Pirate was a pirate crew consisting of a captain who looked like a knockoff Captain Sugar, Captain Syrup, sorry, from WarioWare who was constantly mistaken for a man, despite having very obvious badonkas, bazongas, badonkadonks, <laughs> a lesbian who kept harassing the captain and even in her character boy bio stated she wants to be in a relationship with her, with or without her consent. A cat boy who, you know, he, he is actually he's actually very like kind of likable. Bit of a fan favorite there. A LOL random humor furry thingamabob. And a stereotypical pirate who had two peg legs. They went on wacky adventures. You know, your base it, it can I've heard a lot of people compare it to One Piece. If you kinda want to have an idea. Um, he also had a comic called Patty, which was a realistic look at lesbian relationships. It was about a teenage lesbian, Tom, a teenage tomboy discovering she's lesbian. Or 
joined by a 30 year old girl. Um, we'll talk a bit more about the old uh, lesbian thing later, but anyway. His, uh, what else is he known for? Well, he's also made several strawman comics. Basically, uh, say if you don't like the last Jedi, you're a sexist racist bigot. I'm exaggerating, this is literally what he thought. He had believed all conservatives and Republicans were racist, homophobic, big, sexist bigots. This type of fact goes over on the non-white, LGBT, and female conservative slash Republicans, but this kind of even more they are. He also very much dislikes sexy female characters in video games, thinking everybody he does is a sexist man, despite many women enjoying these designs. And that's about it. Yeah, his comics were very boring to read, uh, pretty much the same thing every time he was preaching straw man comics. Now, uh, onto his lesbian fetish, which he tries to paint as him being progressive. Which, if he had a lesbian fetish, I, I don't care. I really don't care. People can be within to whatever they want to be into as long as, you know, legal, I don't care. <laughs> Not my job to police like grown adults do in their home. But, uh, everybody, everybody's problem with it was he tries to paint this as him being progressive. Um, even though, you know, uh, when a teenage lesbian came to tell him he, they, she was uh, uncomfortable with his obsession with the course, not he, he uh, talked down to her. And as a woman, the way he treats us makes me a little uncomfortable. He, uh, he, he sees us as perfect little sexless beings who just want to chastely hold hands and give little butterfly smooches to other women. And it's evil men that make let us. Yeah. You know what? Well, he claims to be a feminist ally, unless you disagree with him. I mean, take his whole beef with Pleb Comics, for example. If you don't know who Pleb Comics is, she was a, for lack of a better term, anti SJW comic book artist. She would take uh, online arguments she would come across of and make a comic version of them, linking them at her, and, which made her, you know, in my opinion, oh, pretty unique compared to a bunch of other political. Um, comic artist on either side because she actually provided, you know, sources and she wasn't just making straw man comics. But anyway, uh, he got into beef with, with, beef with her because she redrew some of his, uh, um, inktober pieces. And when talking about her, he would refuse to refer to her as a woman, even stating he did that just to be a jerk. Dobson really are a feminist ally. He also, however, my in my opinion, his worst offense, the worst thing this man has done, is his art style. <laughs> um, you know, despite the fact, you know, when he started out, he uh, had a, it was basically a knockoff Rumiko Takahashi art style, which I actually liked. It gave me a, uh, early 80s anime inspired vibe, which I really liked it. I enjoyed it. However, he decided to make his art style more western, which, you know, fine, but you know how he did it? By adding a crap ton of unnecessary detail lines and exaggerating the faces to the point where they worked uncomfortable. Look at this baby bear face. Look at it. I had to see it now. All of you got to see it. Look at it. Look at it. Oh my gosh. Uh, his little blue bear person has the most punchable face I have ever seen. Ugh, freaking care bear. I'm crack looking butt. He doesn't take criticism well, however. He, he really doesn't. So if you uh, you were telling that, he will probably get really mad at you. That's people's biggest problem with Dobson is his inability to take criticism. A couple examples were when he, he made a comment um, saying, oh, you're stupid for doing animation studios critiques because what are they supposed to do with them? That's the third finish. And being very rude to somebody who offered him criticism on a piece he did for a laugh off a fan, fan sign. Dobson, if you're watching this, 
patriotism. It is one of the most important things as an artist is to be able to take criticism. Criticism helps us grow as artists. It helps us improve our craft. This isn't just artists and artists exclusive things. This is everybody. This is not everybody. All creatives. And the fact that he has such an aversion to it would explain why his art has taken such a decline in years since his college days. And that's really what I think the saddest part is. He, he has degraded so much in his art style. And he refuses to take criticism. He refuses to try and improve because he believes, oh, it'll come naturally, so you don't have to try and improve. Which, you're half right. You will naturally improve as the years go on. But if you're not actively trying to improve, I mean, you're not gonna really do much. It's not really gonna, it doesn't do anything when you don't try your best. So if my, my biggest advice to young artists starting it, artists out there, or not even young artists, just artists in general, Criticism is a good thing. It helps you grow. It helps you improve. And yeah, that's basically all I gotta say. Thank you all so much for watching. Have a great day. If you want to see more, if you want to see more information on him, I will link down a couple videos and the Hypocrisy of Andrew Dobson Tumblr blog. If you want to know even more, you can check. Out, he has some pages on Lol Cow and Kiwi Farms. And if you want to see any of my stuff. Just head on down to my Instagram and my Twitter page, which I will also link below. Please leave your opinions down below in the comments section. I apologize for the audio quality. I don't own a, I um, I don't own an actual microphone, and I'm literally recording this on my iPad's microphone. Um, I, I apologize if I keep stuttering a bunch. I, this is my first time really doing a scripted video or an actual video at all. But yeah, have, hope you have a fantastic day. Um, yeah, see y'all later.